Hey, it's Mateo of Two Rain Marketing, and on this edition of the Two Rain Marketing Podcast, I'm talking with Jared of Triumph Strength and Conditioning, and you're going to hear about how he and his partner Mark went from operating a gym out of a car wash to their amazing multi-room massive fitness facility that they're in today. Mark actually had to leave the interview right as we started because they had a surprise consultation, a surprise no sweat intro walk in. I think he was able to sell two new members while Jared and I were on the video chat here. So we'll also learn how they consistently turn $300 of ad spend into two to 3,000 in front end revenue every single month. So make sure you subscribe to Two Rain Radio for more marketing tips and secrets each week. Hello and welcome to the Two Brain Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Mateo Lopez. I'm one of the digital marketing mentors at Two Brain Business. Thanks again for joining us. This is your weekly dose of digital marketing magic. Every week, we're going to go over marketing campaign strategies, useful tips, and updates to keep you in the loop on the ever-changing landscape of advertising on the internet for your business. And, uh, and today, we're going to talk with uh, the guys over at uh, Triumph Strength and Conditioning. Uh, we're here right now with, uh, with Jarrett and, uh, we're to learn about their experience and how they've been able to sustain, uh, their growth month over month, um, past three months here, uh, and, uh, learn more about their business and how, how they're able to attract new clients. So, uh, how's it going? I'm uh, doing really well, man. Thanks for having us on. Um, Mark is, uh, He's with a, a no sweat that just happened to show up. So hopefully he comes back with a closed sale, but uh, it's always good to see uh, somebody coming in. So uh, things are going really well, man. Um, we, we've really been driving ourselves in the right direction now. Finally, after five years um, for like the last, the last three months have really pushed us, I think, into a point of no return as far as uh, positivity. You know, I think a lot of people, if you guys are starting or if you're current, um, two brain, um, part of, part of the two brain family, I think it's, it's one of those things you have this kind of tipping point where you're like, oh, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. And I think we're finally getting to that point. It feels really good. Awesome, man. Well, tell, tell us a little about you and, and the business and how you, you and Mark came to, to, to this point. And, and I know you, I know this used to be a, a different business. So tell us a little bit about that, a little bit of history about the, about the gym. Sure. Yeah, we, um, way back in, uh, well, I think Mark and I met around 2008 or 2009. So kind of the early days of, of CrossFit and doing, uh, oh, that is early. That's like, uh, I, I distinctly remember doing Helen in a, in a urban active zone, so a treadmill, a TRX machine and a dumbbell for kettlebell swing. So, wow. uh, we, we were those guys. Um, and then, um, had the opportunity to work at a, at a facility, a gym that had been starting out and it's right around the 2011 mark, 2012 mark, where you could have opened a gym and a shed and people would have flocked to it. Right. Um, and the opportunity arose to purchase a business. Uh, the guy was moving and, um, down, down South. And, uh, so we purchased a, a gym. And uh, I was in an old kind of dingy car wash. Uh, it was about 2,500 square feet of available space. Jim was in a car wash? It was. Have you, have you ever seen one of the drive through car washes? Yeah. They poured concrete on the floor and made it into a gym. Really? It was about 120 feet long, but only about 20 feet wide. Wow. That's so, wild. It was an interesting, to say the least, space. Uh, and then we... So that was 2013, we purchased the business. Um, and again, much like anyone else who kind of just dives into it because they like to train, uh, figures out that, hey, we just bought ourselves a job um, and it's kind of running our lives. And we sustained that um, <laughs> for the last five years. Uh, so we celebrated five years in October of last year. Uh, we moved to a 7,000 square foot facility where we've been since 20, um, I guess that would be 2015. Um, cause we were, we're at, well, no, 2016. So we're ending our three year lease here. About Why'd, you guys leave the, Why'd you guys leave the car wash? Leave the car wash. It was, uh, there was nowhere to go, man. Uh, there was just nowhere to, to expand to. Um, it was just such a unique space. It would actually be a perfect uh, barbell club. Um, I'm now on the Kentucky, the Kentucky board for uh, weightlifting. 
And uh, I, I keep going back there thinking that, man, that would be a really good spot for a barbell club. But, nice. um, but anyways, it, was, uh, it just wasn't conducive for growth. Um, and we moved into a place that was, um, it was gymnastics, then cheerleading. Um, so it was just a giant open space, much like many gyms. And it was perfect for us. So um, we've been here for the last three years. So, um, and then, you know, we've been through mentorships. We've had a couple of business owners, um, at our facility kind of reach out and help us along the way. And, and then taking a dive into, uh, an official business mentorship with, uh, another, another group working with them for a while, saw some improvement. And then two brain has always been on the back burner for us. Um, I think you, as, as business owners, you kind of piecemeal a little bit right so you do what you can afford so uh the the price tag originally was like wow there's no way and they finally got to the point where like man we 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 provide a premium service we charge a premium price we know we're better there's a reason these guys are are what they are and we really took the dive back in december of 2018 and uh talking to jeff um, you know, we're like, should we wait till after the new year? He's like, if this is your downtime, this is the perfect time to do it. So we, we jumped in head first and, uh, haven't looked back. So tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Cause I think that, it, uh, that where you just said, oh, we, we bought ourselves a job. Cause I think that's an experience that a lot of us have probably gone through. So what was it like, you know, trying to grind it out those, those first, you know, three, four or five years? Yeah. Uh, f- first off, shout out to the guys up at uh, NapTown. Um, we actually heard them on the podcast. Uh, Mark did actually. So kudos to Mark for pointing them out. And he actually reached out to them and we drove up there and spent the day with them. And that was actually the selling point. <laughs> that, was the, that was the final selling point for, for Two Brain. It was seeing, seeing the proof was like, and, and them describing where they started from and going, oh, wow, that's us. You know, um, so it was one of those things where it was like, this is definitely, definitely the direction we went ahead. So as far as like the, us owning a, a job or the job owning us, so to speak, was sleeping at the gym, um, you know, oh, wow, it's I'm um, closing up at eight o'clock at night and I got to be back here for the 530 a.m. class. You know, at the time I'm, I'm single and it's like, well, me and the dog are sleeping here tonight because it's just easier than going home. Um, I've spent you know, a few nights at the gym before. I think yeah, we probably have. You know, and I think I think you wear it as a badge of honor a little bit. You 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 know you're like oh you know this is this is my this is my life this is what I do this is what I love. Uh, but at a certain point, I think you have this identity shift of like I don't want to have to grind it out every day to make ends meet. I want to grind it out to help people, and that's what we got in the business to do. And I don't feel like we are able to help people to our fullest extent when we're um you know having to sleep at the gym so uh that that was that was kind of a a big you know it's like as you're starting to see these changes and go like wow what do i do now that i don't have to be here every night 14 hours you know and then you you can actually start to take a step back and realize that wow i can actually reach and help more people and that's exactly what we've been able to do so it's been it's been really really freeing in that sense yeah, I think that was one of the first things I read from Chris that was kind of an eye opener. Was like, you got you got to pay yourself something. You know, you got to treat yourself right because otherwise, it's almost like putting your your air mask on before exactly before uh, you know the the people next to you because you have to be able to. You can only give your best if you're at your best, and so exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. And and it's funny because we've the things that we used to give away for free. And I think if you guys keep up with the, the Facebook group, I just recently saw somebody post an email about how everyone's kind of mad that they're being charged for these things now. And it's like, I think one of the best comments is like, when was the last time you had a roof put over your head for free, you know, like quality costs, costs money. And it's, I think it's time that if you're legitimately giving the best you can possibly give, it's worth something. Um, you know, we used to give away seven fundamental classes for free and it's, it's funny to laugh at now, but it's like, those are personal training sessions and we're we're giving you an hour of our time, you know? So, um, 
that alone was probably one of the best things we've ever done is just being able to charge for our fundamental classes, you know, because it's, it's not, not only providing revenue, but now I don't have to do them because I can pay one of my trainers to do it. And just so happens my, my brother-in-law is my head trainer and they just had their first child. So it's like, he needs to be able to make a living. And now we have this responsibility to provide this, this value for him as well. So it, it allows, it, it has allowed us to do that. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's such a such an important point. I feel like we talk. I talk about this a lot on here, but I just think it's. I'm still talking to gym owners. They're still giving away all of these services for free, all this time for free, and and you know they're worried about people down the street who are cheaper or whatever it is. And it's like you know, you've got to just if you have something of value, you know the the market will reward you in kind. And so like you know if if it's that good, people will pay for it. Exactly. I think you should exactly. just focus on being as that long good. As you're, and as long as you're the one that's continuing education and you are keeping the top of your game, like you, you will absolutely be rewarded for that. Now, if you're just in a slump, you know, just kind of doing the bare minimum, then maybe you need to take a look at yourself personally. But I think if, you know, a lot of us pride ourselves in, in continuing to learn and grow as trainers. And um, I think one of the things that it's allowed me to do the most is just empathy even more um you know when you can actually when you're not just trying to get as many people in as possible and you're getting quality people in that are willing to pay you premium now i can take the time to learn about you learn about your family learn about your your issues learn about the uh the underlying problems um blake uh recommended a book um building your story brand and if you guys haven't listened to that it's incredible because it's it's one of those things where like we always put how much like how great our coaches are like no one cares you know we they want to see the story behind the person that's losing those that weight um and and we've been very successful as of recently we had a wonderful woman her name's Kathleen come through our door and our our the conversation went as such she called the gym first sentence out of her mouth said I'm morbidly obese and I need help and we have sat down and made out a, a, a long-term plan for her to lose as much weight as she needs. And it's one of those things where we're not putting ourselves in the forefront. We're putting her in the forefront and we're not doing it for the Facebook likes, the Instagram likes, but it just so happens that CrossFit HQs picked up on this little story and has reposted it. And, you know, so these are all just side benefits from doing the right thing, I guess is my point. It's not, we're not sitting here saying, Oh, she's giving us, you know, the, the top level of our 90 day challenge. So we're going to give her the most attention. No, we're just telling her story and her story just happens to be pretty incredible. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I think what you just said is so important when it comes to sales too, when it comes to marketing, it's like, yeah, no one, you know, no one cares about the specialty barbells you have or your Lico stuff, or like you said, the coaches, um, I mean, those things are important, but to, to lead with that, you know, that's not what's important or what's going to resonate with someone. It's, it's the stories of, of people interacting with your service and, and the benefits they've, they've seen from, from, from using it. Right. So that's exactly what you're you're leading, leading with the, the community aspect, leading with the, the people that make up your, your family, so to speak. I mean, cause these truly are our family members. And I think that's, one of the things that we've been uh, the whole time, even when we're, we're working these long hours and working these days where it's like, you know, what the hell am I doing? It's the underlying tone has always been put, put our people first. And I think the biggest difference maker with, at least with two brain has been, we've always thought putting our people first by giving them free stuff, whether it's, Hey, we're doing a free clinic because you guys pay a premium or, Hey, we're hosting this, this event and it's free to you guys because we, we love you. Um, and I think again, putting, we're putting our budget, we're imposing our budget on them and not realizing that a lot of these people do have expendable income and we're not out to take, take from them, but we are out to provide a service and those services do cost money. That part you just said, put the people first, was that something that had always been kind of in the background or was that something you kind of developed more as you went through the vision and value section of the incubator? Uh, that was something from day one. Um, 
and you know, I don't, the place that we, that both Mark and I came from, it never seemed like that was at the forefront. And that was one of the things that we always wanted to be at the forefront of our, our community. We, we, we sat down with our coaches years ago and literally just said, Hey guys, what are, what are things that you think triumph embodies? And I, we just, I set a timer and I said five minutes, we are just going to say words that come to your mind. And I wrote every single one down and then we went through one by one and voted yay or nay. And then we broke it down uh, essentially from about 70 to down to four core values. Um, and those being client first, humility, consistency, and integrity. So, um, and client first being number one at all times. So that was something that we, we had done from the get go. Um, and I think that was one of the things that we had always, anyone that we talked to in the area that wasn't from, oh, I've, I've heard your guys' you know, community is amazing. And that's great and all, you know, it's, it's fantastic. But um, I, I think, again, it, it came down giving away too much in the long run. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was always in the forefront for us. It, it was always something that had to be, it had to be the, the most important thing to us because they're, they're the ones that keep us in business. They're the ones that allow us to do what we love. So then in your words, you know, in your own words, what is it that you guys sell and how do you sell it? Well, you're – really just selling the best hour of someone's day. I think that is, that is really what it comes down to. You know, um, people are either told no, they're being put down their job or they hate their job or they do their job because they love their family or they're having family problems or they're, you know, someone died or someone has a bad diagnosis. So we try day in and day out to provide just one hour where you can come in throw your you know, physical and emotional baggage at the door and just kind of get a workout in, enjoy being with your friends um, and then go home, hopefully a little bit happier. The more that we have been able to dive in with people, the more we've realized that like you figure out what's actually important in life. Um, and again, um, just backstepping a little bit, you know, starting in 2008, it was like, Back in the day, we're like, if you had handstand push-ups, you go to regionals. You know, it was like, so it was like, yeah. we, came, we came from a competitive background. And then for the longest time, that was my, my personal identity. And then having a community show me what's actually important in life. You know, it's, it's family, it's the friends, the people surround yourself with. So I, I feel like I have, um, I'm in debt to them for, you know, improving my life. So we always try and, you know, improve theirs as much as we possibly can. So. Um, you know, one of the things we like to do is at least once a month, we host a, a community event. We've done, um, uh, we do Super Bowl parties, like, like most gyms, right? Like, I think it's, it's pretty common at this point. Uh, I think it's not even, it's, it's unspoken. It's like a thing you just do, right? But we do um, Super Bowl parties. We have a bowling alley next door. So we go bowling. There's a, a minor league baseball team across the street. So we go to them. Um, we you know, host internal throwdowns. So it's, it's like a way to get people to compete without competing. Um, we do uh, obviously things like Murph and all that good stuff, but it, it's just things outside those, those, those times we get outside of the gym atmosphere is really where you get to see people kind of hang out and like, Oh, I didn't know you went to this. My, Oh, you work with my brother and you start to make these connections and your, your community gets a little bit bigger. That's awesome. And so if you're selling, sounds like, the best part of someone's day. Mark's in uh, no sweat intro right now. So what's he doing? How is he selling it? Uh, he is he is selling it by meeting this person where they are at. Um, I think as fitness professionals, as CrossFitters, as people who have done this for, even if you've got six months under your belt, you 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 get an idea of what CrossFit is. You know you you know where you struggle. You know where. Uh, you can, you can um, thrive. Walking into any new place is scary enough as it is. Walking into a fitness facility where you may feel um, maybe overweight or, in, you know, incompetent or uh, stupid, for lack of a better term, we just try and meet people where they're at. We take, we, you know, we, we come by their side, we sit next to them, we don't sit across from them. And we really just make sure that they're comfortable and, and tell them how we can improve their life. You know, so I don't think it's as much selling as it is just 
explain to people that like, Hey, this is a safe space. You know, you can be yourself. You can, you know, let loose a little bit. You can, um, let your guard down, so to speak, because, uh, again, I think just as human nature, especially now it's like your guards always up. So coming by them, ex you know, explain that we're on their side and really just meeting them where they're at, explain to them that no matter what your ability, no matter what your age, no matter what's your history, like it doesn't matter to us. Like we're going to be, we, we can help you. And I think that's the wonderful thing about CrossFit. We have this program that's designed to help the fittest on earth or the non-fittest on earth. And we can help both of those people at the same time, just in different ways. I think that's what's amazing about the methodology as well as, you know, you can, it, it's, it's, and I think CrossFit HQ is getting hit to it too. You know, you can see all the content they're putting out. It's like everyone doing squats on couches and thrusters with water bottles. So exactly. Um, they're, they're, I think they're making this turn for the better. I mean, I know they got some grief um, with the games and all that, but I, you know, when you really do look at the people in need and we're in, we're in Florence, Kentucky um, and it's not a healthy area. You know, I, I get off my exit every morning and I look to my right and I look to my left and it's like windows crack smoking a cigarette or, you know, while drinking a Mountain Dew. And it's like, there are way more of those people that we can help than elite athletes. And for the most part, elite, I mean, a lot of elite athletes are going to are self-driven anyways, you know? They don't, they don't quote need us, even though we know, you know, they need coaching, but it's one of those things where we can help a lot more people that are in dire straits than the people that already have a, you know, sub two minute Fran. So. Totally, man. And so let's get in the nitty gritty a little bit. So this person walks in, um, what happens? What's Mark going to do? I know you said either going to sit down next to him. Do you, you know, do you take him on a tour? What, what do you do? How does it yeah, work? So, um, we're sitting, uh, up. So we have a pretty unique space, right? Um, you walk in, in our lobby and it's, I, I'm not exactly sure what this loft space space was, but we have a loft space that overlooks our entire gym. Um, so it's, I've got three giant windows behind me. Um, so we generally will take them up here and especially if there's a class going on, it separates them enough to where they can see what's going on, but they're not like hearing barbells being thrown around and stuff like that. Right. Because then we're, we're trying to take this, any barrier to entry out of the equation, you know, um, the, the fact that you showed up is a good sign. Number one, I think if you, if you've been dealing with no sweat intros, you probably have a lot more leads than you do people who show. You know, people lead and then they, they'll either not confirm or they won't show. So if they show up, that's a great sign. And then when we take them upstairs um, and we really just start with like, hey, how's it going? How's your week going? Um, and it's not just to make small talk. It's again, to break this barrier to entry down. It's to show that like, hey, I'm here to actually listen about you and not just, it's not like, here's our prices. You know, it's, hey, how's your week going? Oh man, your daughter was sick. That's uh, that sucks. You know, I don't have a daughter, but I've got two dogs, and whenever they're sick, they, that really messes my week up. And it's really again coming by their side um, and just asking some basic questions. What do you know about what we do? Uh, if, they, if it's nothing, we give a little bit of explanation that you know the best. Uh, one of my my favorite things to tell people is um, we're not obviously never say the definition of CrossFit. That's kind of a it's kind of a given, right? It doesn't matter to anybody. Uh, I always like to tell people that we take the guesswork out of their day. Um, what's the, what's the worst part about walking to a gym, figuring out what you're going to do for the day. Well, I'm going to go run on the treadmill a little bit. I'm going to lift some of these weights. Uh, I might go do this. It's like, no, we're going to walk in. I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing for the day. We're going to explain it down to a T. If you can't do something, we're going to show you exactly how you can do it safely and still get a great workout. We're going to do a cool down together and then you're going to be on with your day. And then from there, it's, um, you know, kind of from our previous conversation, just asking them about what their needs are, you can kind of start to derive the best plan for them, a prescription, if you will. I think that's one of the things we talk about in the incubator, right, is, is, is coming up with a prescription for their success. Some people just will fit right into a group class. It's, it's obvious from the get-go. That's what they're in for, and that's what they're going to thrive in. And a, a lot of people, it's like, hey, we need to talk about personal training because with the two knee surgeries you've had and the fact that you just had a kid, I think that this is going to be the best bet for your success. 
Um, and then the, I think the last combination, the last missing piece is if you don't have anything in the, in the world of nutrition, just get some material together to where you can make recommendations for nutrition, because that's been probably one of the biggest shifts that we've seen as far as allowing people to make visible changes, even, even past, you know, members that have been with us from day one, it's like, Hey, let's talk about nutrition tracking just a little bit. And then seeing them take some accountability for themselves. And it's like, wow, there's the difference we've been, we've been needing. We've been missing that all along. Cause I think as, as CrossFit coaches, we're just focusing on, even if you're focusing on the, the fitness part and maybe uh, sleep and recovery, you're still missing this huge chunk that can really, really, really help people. And I think that's the next maybe evolution for a lot of, a lot of gyms like ours. Yeah. I, I think so if you think about it, most people are coming in for some kind of, not mo yeah, I would say a good chunk of people join a gym because they have some kind of body composition goal they're trying to, they're trying to achieve, right? hundred percent. And, yeah. and going back to that building your story brand book, it's you're, you're solving a external issue by solving an internal problem because all these things are internal issues, you know, um, my, uh, and I'm sure she's fine with my, my wife has been through two, uh, eating disorder treatment centers and she's a, a, has internal issues that make her feel like she's externally has an issue, you know? So it's like the more that you can dive in with your people and under help them solve these internal problems, the, the more success I think you're going to have. And it just takes, it takes empathy. I think it's just leading with empathy. It's leading with uh, seeking to understand, not to be understood, you know, and that's, that, that I think has been one of the biggest keys to our success outside of, you know, making the switch over to brain. Awesome. Yeah. I think that the empathy part, I think, I think that's, that's huge for sales. It's huge for coaching. It's huge for, and it's not, it's not common in CrossFit, I think, because CrossFit is raw. CrossFit is like down and dirty, right? And it's like, you know, you're, you're yelling these people's faces, but a lot of people just, you need to come beside them and tell them that you like, you understand where they're coming from. And I think it, you can have, but the dichotomy between the two, but it's really important that you can make, you can differentiate the days that you can yell at people and the days that you need to come beside them and tell them that everything's going to be all right. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, I think that's totally true. And I think, yeah. And I think that's where you're going to see a lot of the, you know, as affiliates keep opening and closing, I think that's where you're going to see the different, the differentiating factors, right. Is, is, uh, between those who can make that evolution, like you were talking about, who can, um, you know, make, you can grow. I think it's just grow as, as people, yeah. you know, like the, you're even just in the time that we've been open, at least in our area, I'm, I'm sure it's different everywhere, but like, like your big box gyms have gone from, Gold's Gym was bought out by Urban Active, was bought out by LA Fitness, and now you see Planet Fitness coming in, and none of them are offering anything different. They're all offering the same thing, you know, whether it's, it's, it's branded differently, but like they're all offering the same thing, and I think where, again, you can see the shift is getting people to understand that like, take into account the, the lives of the people you're actually training rather than just treating them as a transaction. And once you can do that, I think it makes a huge difference. I think that's an amazing point. And so you mentioned a little bit about, so you've, you've gone through this transformation. You guys have been in business. You guys have learned a lot over the past five years. We were talking a little bit about this before. Now that you've kind of uh, made some changes to, to your service and kind of the way you guys operate, you've been, you, you've been able to capitalize on that and grow even more with some of the paid advertising stuff you've been using with, Gray, with Blake. Um, so you, you said you spend around an average of $300, $350 a month. You're generating $2,500 to $3,000 in front end sales. You've been able to generate a grand total of close to 10 grand in front end sales. What advice do you guys have for anyone who's uh, getting ready to start more actively uh, marketing their business and their service? Talk to people who know what they're doing. A, uh, that's, that's always good. Cause again, we were throwing money at stuff, um, you know, in running campaigns, but not, knowing how to manage it, you know, um, ha again, it's just like anything else. I mean, why do people seek us out? Because they don't know how to fitness for lack of a better term. You know, we didn't know how to business for lack of a better term. 
So uh, seeking people out who, who have the ability to do so and, and kind of take a step back and, and realize that we don't have even any of the answers when it comes to running a successful business. You know, we, we are trainers by nature, not necessarily business people. Um, and when you see the people who are successful, it's when they can make the jump from one to the other. Um, and I, I would say if you're seriously considering it, it's, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth um, the investment of the time and, and money. Even if you didn't do the marketing side of things, let's just say you went through the incubator and you, you were done. Um, it was a, a massive um, a massive leap for us just to kind of get these systems in place and allow us to hire additional coaches to take some of the weight upon off of us and grow our business and things like that. So um, as far as the, the money and the marketing side of things, um, you know, if you're already eating shit, why not eat shit for a little bit longer and, and throw, you know, we, we're used to eating crow. You know, if you're sleeping at your gym already, if you're, if you're barely making ends meet, what's, what's a little bit more struggle when you, you do have, uh, I don't want to say certainty, but you've got a pretty good chance of coming on the other end as a better, as a better business owner uh, and having some more financial freedom. I think the two things you hit on, which I think are important is one, like seek out a coach, seek out an expert, yes. seek out some help. If you don't know how to do something, find someone who's done it before and, and ask them, Hey, will you help me? I think, I think it's uh, to that, to that point, man, is like, how many certifications do, do you have? And then how many like business coaches have you talked to? You know, if you, if your certification list is two pages long, it's like, it should maybe be a half a page in your business. If you run a business, then your business coaching page should be a page and a half. You know, those are the people you need to be talking to. And, um, I, I, again, just for us, uh, you know, we've, it'll, it, this has also allowed us to open our eyes to what other people are doing um, as far as looking at their business model, not necessarily just like, oh, well, they're successful. I don't understand why. So um, I, I think absolutely, man, like you said, just seek out someone who knows what they're doing. And I think the other thing you were kind of touching upon was paid advertising you know, or, or even not just investing in coaching or mentorship or a course or so like it treat it as an investment. It is an investment. Right. And so, you know, you've got to treat it as you would and like any other thing, like, I don't know, Bitcoin or something like that, you know, right. you got to do your, do your research and be smart about the timing in which you're going to do it. And then uh, treat it as a, an investment where like, if you lose, it's fine, but you're going to learn something along the way. I, I agree. I agree. Even long in the longer term. And and the nice thing is, is when you do get to the marketing side of things, you can set your own budget. You know, you can throw as much or as little as you want at it. And just realizing that probably if things are put in place the way they should be, the more money you throw at it, the more money you're probably going to make as long as everything else, all your other ducks are in a row. All the other ducks got to be in a row, right? You're, yes. It's all circular. Like if you cheap lead costs are great. But if your service is, uh, is not as great, you're, you're just a, that's a recipe for churn, not a recipe for growth. Exactly. 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. Awesome, man. Well, if people want to find you and, and, and Mark, where, where can they find you if they want to talk to you? Triumphstrength.net is our website. Um, phone number 859-414-5904. Um, we're on Facebook at Triumph Strength, uh, Instagram at Triumph Strength. Um, you know, I, we're, we are more, we are, one of the things we always tell people is we're an open book. I'll tell you all the quote, you know, we'll give you the key to the castle uh, because most people aren't willing to put in the work. So a hundred percent, if you're, if you're uh, around and you want to chat, be more than happy to, to meet up or, or chat with you guys. So um, that, that's, uh, that's, we're always available. Well, I think something we didn't talk about before was the fact that you went over and visited Naptown. I mean, yeah. that's, I think that's if you're a gym owner and you're, and you're you know you're unsatisfied with your growth you you want to you know take your business to the next level you're you're thinking about mentorship or you're thinking about it like, I mean the first step really should just be like visit the gyms around you or visit the yep. people that you see that are succeeding and like I, I when we that was something we used to do every quarter was we would just go take a class 
at another CrossFit gym, even if it was like a quote unquote competitor, like we would go, we would, we would email the owners and say, Hey, like, you know, we're going to, we, all of our coaches want to come take class. Like, is that cool with you? Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. With me. yeah gone are the days of, uh, hopefully gone are the days of like, you know, you got to hold your, your cards to your vest and act like you have all the answers because I think none of us know what the hell we're doing. I don't say, you know, like there's a certain point where it's like, none of us know what we're doing. And, you know, we're, we're all, we're not fighting for the same people. You know, I've done, we've done the numbers, we've done the math and we need 0.02% of our population in our area to be successful. Like 0.02, not 20%, not 2%, 0.02% for us to be successful and to make a valid living. Oh yeah. I mean, my, my gym in Philadelphia, it literally is like 30, 30 feet away from another CrossFit yep. gym. Right. And it's like, it's fine. We need, you know, 180 members out of the whole city of Philadelphia. Right. I think we'll be able to find enough. Exactly. Uh, um, and so, but yeah, so those listening, like, you know, go, if you're struggling with sales, right, go, go inquire at a Planet Fitness or a Gold's Gym and like go through their, pretend you're like looking to buy a membership, like go through their consultation process, see what they do, right? They're obviously doing something. Right. Uh, Orange Theory Fitness, like they haven't closed a studio once. They haven't closed the franchise yet. Yep. Um, go, go take a class, go, go inquire, go opt into their, their free class form and, and see what they're doing. And then like, uh, like these guys, right? Go visit, not not go visit Naptown. Everyone's gonna go to Naptown now. But yeah, go visit. Go hey, visit been, they're killing it though. I mean, they're killing yeah. it. You know, we we. I know it was nice too because we're we're far enough away again that there is that competitor sense. Like you're you're, you know, pick somebody a half hour away. You know, pick somebody an hour away if you're worried about something like that. It's not, but again, it's it's one of those things. You should be at least. Um, you should be knowledgeable of what's going on around you. You know, if, if they've got a kid's program, like you should know everything about their kid's program. 100%. All right, man. Well, thanks for hopping on. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the rest of 2019 holds for you. All right. I appreciate it, Mateo. Thank you.